the business environment today has become so globalized, we believe that it is important to cover management topics in a global context. The world is a melting pot, and both present and future leaders will at some point have to deal with international affairs or people of different cultures. In order to exemplify these situations, we have decided to center our TV show around a corporation that has operations in three countries of very different cultures, Costa Rica, Thailand, and India. Best way to teach is through a fun, creative way. We know that picking up a textbook and reading about terms can be very boring and often leads to a lack of understanding and attention. Textbooks tend to be monotone, and thus people's minds drift and do not retain the information they are reading. We have all found ourselves reading and then going back and thinking, wait, what did I just read? I don't remember any of it. Because of this, we want to teach people through an interesting TV show that will keep the audience on their toes paying attention because it is so interesting and amusing. This way, they can enjoy the learning process and retain more information. In our TV show, we will present business scenarios that leaders may encounter. We will exemplify positive leadership through characters that strive to do the right thing and lead effectively. We will also incorporate management topics, ideas, and vocabulary in order to teach our audience management concepts. Our hopes are that through our show, we will not only teach about management, but also spark an interest in those who may not have considered management as a career. The topics that we will be discussing throughout the presentation are globalization, multicultural teams, managerial ethics, strategic implementation, evolutionary management, and motivational process. These are all topics that we implement in each episode in which each one of the managers for the different hotels is able to use these topics and strategies in order to be able to get over certain barriers that are imposed, that are also imposed in the real world when managing a hotel. Paradise Corporation is a company that owns several hotels in exotic locations including Thailand, India, and Costa Rica. Each of these are small hotels that are situated in remote locations in an attempt to provide tourists with the most authentic experience possible. Thus, these hotels need to be small so that they can exist in underdeveloped locations without disturbing the wilderness and maintaining sustainable operations. The CEO of the company, Julia Taylor, is very dedicated to her job and employees. She is a great leader who most of the time makes good decisions. However, she often faces controversial situations as she must deal with different countries' regulations, laws, and policies. One of Jane's struggles deals with the company's desire to expand operations while still following their moral code and mission statement of putting the environment before profit. Because this show deals with issues that may occur at any level in a corporation, whether it is at the CEO, manager, or young employee level, it is relevant and may provide lessons to business people of any ages. Typically, people advance up the ladder of management through time. Thus, this show will address issues typically faced by people when they first enter the workforce, as well as those typically faced by older business people who are in top management positions. This show will cover concepts including ethical dilemmas, code of ethics, delegation of tasks, planning, and goal setting. As mentioned earlier, we want to incorporate global affairs in our TV show. In order to do this, we have decided to set up our TV show in both domestic and international environments. The Central Operations Office will be in Tampa, Florida. We will also have episodes set in each of these three countries, Costa Rica, Thailand, and India. Each episode will focus on one country and will allow a glimpse into that country's environment and culture. We are presenting them in an organizational structure in order to show how the organization divides its labor into distinct tasks and coordinates them. Julia Taylor is a CEO of Paradise Corp. She fits the general definition of a good manager. She's positive, inclusive, goal-driven, and professional. She treats her teammates as if they were family, not subordinates. In this way, she is able to create strong professional relationships which enhance satisfaction and productivity. When making decisions, she generally uses common sense rather than evaluation devices. However, she realizes that the use of of decision-making models and devices are very important and useful, and thus she encourages her teammates to use them. Gregory Westbrook is the financial manager of Paradise Corporation. Unlike Julia, he prefers formalized systems. He believes that when dealing with financial decision-making, one must study the plan, situations, and historic information carefully in order to make an informed decision. He is very responsible, ethical, and follows rules and regulations strictly. He is not much of a risk-taker. Denise Allen is the marketing manager of Paradise Corporation. She deals with all the marketing and advertisement operations. She's very creative with her job. She's also very understanding and is able to adapt in order to work with others, even if their requests do not necessarily align with her vision. The hotel in Costa Rica is managed by Christophe Dupont. Christophe is very team-oriented and inclusive. He believes that all parts of the team should work together and create strong relationships. 
Thus, he enforces an informal communication structure, allowing employees to work together even if their fields are unrelated. He is also a goal setter. He spends lots of time looking for ways to improve the hotel, create plans, and then implements them. Christoph has three managers under him. Chester Levenfeld, the bar and restaurant manager who leads his team of chefs, bartenders, servers, and kitchen employees. Domingo Marquez is the customer service manager who deals with the receptionists and guides. And Enrique Salazar is the housekeeping and landscaping manager. He ensures that cabins are clean and that the whole hotel, land, trails, and pools look presentable and safe. The manager of the hotel in Thailand is Sunya Kunchai. She is straightforward and hardworking. She is very firm with her staff and does not accept change. Part of her purpose in our TV show is to exemplify the problems that may arise when managers are too traditional or opposed to change. Sunya has three managers under her. Chuan Pao Song is a restaurant and bar manager. Intera Lieb Kai is the housekeeping and landscaping manager. And Sunisa Juntasa is the customer service manager. Each of these managers have teams under them whom they delegate tasks to. The managers of India consist of Manuj Gupad, the hotel manager. His way of managing is very traditional. He has a meeting at the beginning of every month with his subordinates and employees to give them expectations that he will regulate every day. He looks to see that the goals that he set at the beginning of the month are accomplished throughout the month, making the hotel stronger throughout the year. He likes input from his customers, which is why he's very personable with them, asking them questions about how the management is going and what they would like to improve or see improve from the management. He's very open to feedback, and he treats his employees like family. Nikila Kamdar is a customer service manager. She follows Manut Kupat's way of managing. She makes sure that her customers are very open to talking to her and are not afraid to give feedback to them. She treats her customers and her employees like family. Bharat Kana, the bar and restaurant manager. He focuses on making sure that the food is as exotic as possible assuring that the customers are getting their money's worth and eating as if they would in India. Even though the hotel is in India, a lot of the times hotels in India don't serve Indian food, which is why our hotel tries to specialize in serving the most exotic Indian food there is. Sanya Patel is a housekeeping, landscaping lead. She makes sure that her employees make not only the outside but the inside of the hotel as clean as possible. She makes sure that it looks appetizing and appealing to go into the hotel and live there. This first episode called The Lobby introduces the characters along with their personalities and roles in the show. This episode doesn't focus on one hotel at a time. Instead, it focuses on introducing the diversity that Corporation Paradise offers. It shows the viewer that by watching this show, they will learn about management methods and its implementation of diversity. This episode also shows that every country can offer great things to a business by simply having its employees and managers learn from it. The specific topics that episode 1 talks about include sources of motivation, which is a method used of managers to be able to motivate their employees and sub-managers and subordinates in order to make sure that everything is done right and with a good attitude. Sources of motivation has a hierarchy of four sources of motivation, which include internal motives, and external motives. Within internal motives you have needs, cognitions and emotions, which also go into external motives. All of these different topics within that structure make sure that when a manager is managing a specific project, every employee is motivated with different motives. Episode 2 focuses on the expansion of hotel in Costa Rica. Julia Taylor and DuPont mean to discuss how to expand the hotel. They go over different ideas on how the hotel in Costa Rica can expand, making sure that their ethical mission statement is kept intact. A decision of adding cabins is made by one of the employees, making sure that they do not harm the environment in the process. This episode establishes the hotel's mission statement as being environmentally friendly. Julia Taylor and DuPont make sure that they take this very seriously. In order to make sure that the maximization process doesn't get in the way of the mission statement, they decide to make cabins, to construct cabins, cabins that are not only environmentally friendly, but to save energy. The corporation bases its management decisions and daily activities on managerial ethics. Before doing the cabins and hiring people to construct the cabins, they make sure that not only 
are, is a material for the cabins environmental friendly, but they also make sure that the people making the cabins and constructing the cabins have prior knowledge on, on environmental and ethical building of different structures. The topics discussed in episode 2 include ethics, ethical labs, utilitarianism, and strategic planning. All these topics are used in order to explain how a business can be promoted using these topics, making sure that ethics becomes the main ideal for managing a business and still making it a profitable business. The episode of the show revolves around the operations of the hotel in India. In this episode, Julia, Manoush, and Denise Allen meet to discuss methods of marketing to make the hotel look more desirable and thus attract more travelers. They discuss ways to make the hotel look more appealing, original, and different, all to add a feeling of value. Denise Allen discusses methods and strategies. They also have an extensive discussion about what types of demographic groups they are trying to attract. They discuss and the ethics of their marketing plan. This episode covers the classical decision-making model and incorporates methods of defying groupthink. When deciding what innovations to create and what adjustments to make, the group was able to use the classical decision-making model in order to more easily understand and come up with ideas. Denise Allen, who is more of a meticulous planner, became the devil's advocate in this project in order to prevent groupthink. When analyzing what marketing methods to implement in order to increase the hotel's physical and social cultural appeal, they follow the classical model steps one by one. They first identify an ex- the existing problems and the possible opportunities. They identify several problems and then identify solutions for them. While deciding on solutions, Denise acts as devil's advocate, attempting to identify flaws in any of the proposed plans. At this time, they also fulfill step three, identifying alternatives, and step four, analyzing the alternatives. They then implement the idea and continue to monitor the evalu- evaluating the results after the adjustments have been made to assure consistent improvement. During the episode, we emphasize the importance of tackling the possible issue of groupthink, and we show just how detrimental it can be, and present ways to avoid it. We also discuss the importance of using intuitive decision making. Episode 4, called the Room Number Changes, focuses on how dealing with changes in other countries with policies and things of that sort can be complicated. In this in this episode, Julia Taylor has to figure out what types of changes will take effect in order for her to be able to deal with the changes that are already happening. She has to first find out what the changes entail and what policies she must implement and establish within the hotel. Then she has to inform her employees about it um, without getting a negative reaction. And if so, she has to handle this negative reaction not only from the employees but also from her supervisors and from from her clients and guests. Uh, the management team is able to turn this around and make it into a change that's going to be more exotic and they're able to create new features that the hotel offers not only explicitly informing and promoting this change but also making it into something that's not a negative but instead something that's positive and innovative which is uh, very interesting about how management strategies and marketing these management strategies in the proper way can be useful for people. They use the change process in order to make decisions that would allow the transition process to be smooth. Sunya Kunshai and her team had to collect data regarding the change and what political implementations had to be put into the new management plan. Then they had to see the outcomes of this change. Once the outcomes were viewed, they were then compared to the goals that they originally had to see if they met those goals. They, they then receive feedback from customers and other employees. 